come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, the movie re- movie review and talk show podcast that comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not. These are the internet radio superstars. Michaela. Holly. And I'm Colin. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... Holly. Hmm. What did we watch tonight? Um, and how good was it? Mm. <laughs> how good was it? That's, that's an excellent question. We watched Best of the Best. From the year. 1989. And directed by. Directed by Robert Radler. Would oh, we Rob. know him from Rob, anything? Yeah. Do you know Rob? No, I don't. <laughs> I confess. Um, you I think you probably do know okay. Rob. Um, if you've watched any episodes of Power Rangers. Oh, really? Oh, really? He's a Power or, Rangers director? Or Silk Stocking. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Oh, or, wow. Or a couple of George Thorogood music videos. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> so, no, you've never heard of him. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no. All right. Well, I mean, who knows? <laughs> okay. Who knows? I know that I wasn't a, the world's biggest Power Rangers uh, unless fan. You've, unless no. you've seen the classic <laughs> showdown starring... Um, Tybo star Billy Bay. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, but I have a question about if doing Power Ranger, directing Power Rangers, you said. Uh, uh, several. American yeah. Power Rangers? Uh, um, I assume. In his in his credits, it was like all of the Power so, Rangers. Like, so he directed scenes of kids getting hot dogs yeah. and walking around the mall, not any actual fight scenes. Well, right. I don't know because I'm not, <laughs> I'm not well versed in Power Rangers, but I did see that he was credited on multiple different types of yeah. power rangers yeah, it's just a lot a of, of the uh, yeah. the original power rangers all the fight scenes were just taken from the japanese show and they just filmed Fantastic. the clips of the yeah. american actors Fantastic. so i'm like he might have just directed kids walking around a mall eating hot dogs he and that might have been it he yeah and you like know school what? cafeteria and that's it if it got him a paycheck mm-hmm. good, good for him good for him yeah. so this one comes from 1989 when Correct. uh america was enthralled with uh karate championships yes. is that true yes oh uh, yeah a thing there about was the thing didn't yeah. we talk about this on sidekicks sidekicks yeah we did. yeah there was a time that mm-hmm. america was just in, in enamored mm-hmm. by karate mm-hmm. is it kickboxer like the same year or blood sport was that any 87 89 was kickboxer like yeah we're they're all just we're in that area at this point when they were uh yeah we had a lot of yeah, uh karate I mean, themed the karate movies. kid movie like that was 84 on. yeah, yeah. But that blood was sport was 88 Blood Sports eighty eight and yeah. Kickboxer. Let's see. That was it. Was that eighty nine? Eighty nine. Eighty nine. Yeah, 89. I was like, I okay. feel like that was eighty nine. Yeah. So it's in the air. It's a sports movie. This one, yeah, uh, <laughs> an inspirational sports movie. It is a it's team. A, it's, it's a ba- team. Dra- it's a drama between teammates. Movie. It's basically Rudy. But yeah, it's about karate. Yes. Okay. No, that's not true at all. Is it Kickboxer? Or blood sport. Which one would? Yeah, because you got to get on the team, and you're gonna. So, what, well, yeah, what's the setup of this movie? What's the idea? <laughs> um, the idea is there is going to be a, a massive tournament, which just consists of the best of Korea and the best of the United that States. That was a surprise. Yes. A massive tournament. That's it. But there's only two teams participating. It's two teams. Okay. It's yeah. In a very small venue, but yep. we'll get to Correct. that. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Massive. Gotcha. It's basically like every season of Cobra Kai. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's still an American fascination with. Yes. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Is it karate? I think so. So at the end, the only reason that I, that I ask this is at the end, there's all these uh, thank yous to like uh, Taekwondo. And oh, stuff. is is the movie? Kar- no, yeah, it's there. It's Taekwondo. Because they keep saying yeah. like karate, karate, karate. Mm-hmm. But I'm yeah. like, they was say it? they say karate until they get to the tournament, and then at the tournament they start saying Taekwondo. <laughs> is there a difference? Yes. Okay. There is. That uh, I'm not gonna fucking try to explain what the difference is. <laughs> it's a different fighting style. It is a different fighting style. How to explain that? I am the last person that should try to answer that. Okay, all right. But there is a difference. I am assured. <laughs> so a tournament is done. It' gonna happen between yes. Team USA. It's ironic that you picked this because the Olympics mm-hmm. are going on. It's not ironic. <laughs> okay, uh, and uh, Team USA and Team South Korea. 
Um, or they just they consider themselves Korean. They I guess d- right. Korea. Yeah. yeah. Um, and who uh, are we choosing as right. our representatives? Right. In this so our movie opens by choosing the best of the best in the United States to represent Team USA. And we see multiple people getting their letters saying, you've been chosen to compete for Team USA. Okay. Centering yes. in who? Mm-hmm. Or centering on who? Um, well, the star of this movie, Eric Roberts. Mm-hmm. Eric Roberts. And Eric Roberts' hair. In this, yeah, his yeah. hair is his second built. Yeah. yeah. It's My flowing. That long it mane of 80s luscious. hair. Luscious. Yeah. Um, Eric Roberts. Um, Famed Academy right. Award nominated Eric Roberts. Didn't he win? I know he was just nominated. For was what? He? Did he win? Did he win for Did Runaway win? Train? We talked he about Runaway nominated. Train. He was nominated. You sure? Uh, I thought he won Best Supporting. Did he? So, hold on. Because he, um, right, was it Prince of the City? I remember he was in. So there are, okay, there are multiple nominees in this movie. Uh, Eric Roberts was nominated. James Earl Jones was nominated. And Sally Kirkland is nominated. The only Oscar winner in this movie is Louise Fletcher. Okay. Well, that's a cast right there. You're like, that's holy shit. Yeah. Yes. Like, wait a second. If you didn't know about Best of the Best, <laughs> it's got a stacked cast <laughs> of stacked Hollywood cast. Uh, notables. Yeah. Um, and even the, like, I don't even want to say side characters, but the other people around on the team are also familiar. I was like, like Chris, Chris Penn. Penn is in I movie. forgot yeah. I knew who that guy was, let alone knew his <laughs> name. And I saw his face and like, it's like I time warped back to the early 90s and was like, you were in every fucking movie in the early right? 90s. Yeah. Mo- I remember mostly from Beethoven 2 with the- Debbie Mazar. <laughs> he was the other villain with her. He was the other yeah. villain. Well, yeah. He was. Yeah. <laughs> the- was he cast in this because of Footloose? Yeah, I feel like it. Well, he's always this guy. I, yeah, he's yeah, always yeah. this a- exact attitude of man. Like, and I, this character cracks me up because all, all these, all these Team USA members have their like personality, right? And mm-hmm. I love that, they, and they dress like it. It's perfect. Mm-hmm. And he is like the cowboy. Does he even call himself cowboy or something like that? But yeah. Yeah. He, he's Travis. He's the he's, right? yeah. He's like the all American one. But always wears a cowboy hat. Yes, he strikes me as your like not necessarily a professional, but your alcoholic uncle that thinks he knows karate because he watches like a lot of Steven Seagal movies. Like that's the <laughs> energy I get from him is that because he doesn't even look particularly athletic. I know. That's, <laughs> yeah, that, I, he's yeah. And you're like they're gonna use some creative. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. It. Like when I think ultimate karate team. I am not thinking Chris Penn. No, exactly. Right. Yeah, like, he. Sean any Penn's means. brother. And, yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was in it. I noticed uh, at the very beginning in like a bit part, Eddie Bunker was in the movie as uh, Eric Roberts, like on the assembly line. Are they building uh, Corvettes or something? Yeah, yeah. In Portland. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. Uh, but Eddie Bunker was there, and I'm like, oh, Chris Penn and Eddie Bunker were in Reservoir Dogs. They were. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I'm like, that's where I yeah. made the connection there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, he doesn't strike you as like Team USA. Yeah, material. like I understand casting him as like the cowboy right. like, after Footloose, but not in a fucking karate movie. Right, right. exactly. Like, come on. He's the karate cowboy. It's so fucking weird. It's like so his personality weird. makes no sense. And I I thought more people were gonna die in this movie. I thought I think I thought it was gonna be a different type of movie. I was like, oh, he's gonna die really early on. I, I did not expect him to right. well, make it through this whole movie. The the thing about so like I have this is my first time ever seeing this movie, Same. right? But I have heard this title, the best of the best. It's a good title. Mm-hmm. But I've heard this through a lot of my life, and I know that it often shows up on lists of like you know the greatest sports movies or at least karate yeah. move martial arts movies yeah right mm-hmm. and so i was kind of watching it through that lens tonight as like why yeah. mm-hmm. like what what's the like yeah. the, this you, is there's rocky and there's best legitimately the best. like ufc champion mma legend chuck liddell this is his favorite karate movie <laughs> Favorite. favorite that's so crazy okay, we're me. gonna have to get that to is the bottom so crazy of this. because i am going to tell you listener this has escaped me i'm just <laughs> I'm letting you know but maybe there's something here that we're like make uh, no mistake yeah. we're going to have an honest conversation about we this laughed movie. at a lot of times i don't think we were supposed to be laughing so yeah you know. well the <laughs> usual way that these things tend to go right it seems to me is um 
you usually cast a guy who is a recent, you know, black belt or something mm-hmm. and you you elevate him to the position of movie star yeah. so he can be in your karate movie. Yeah. Eric Roberts, right? Father right. of uh, Emma correct. and brother of uh, Julia, Julia. Correct. Uh does not strike me as like he just won. Well, like I get Jean-Claude right. Van Damme, right? Right, we understand that. And and you know, we're we're jumping I'm jumping ahead a little bit here, but like the big fight in this movie is not even him. <laughs> no, because, but this is right. What I was yeah, like, like at yeah. the beginning when the okay. So there's a couple of key things I I picked up on it was a story <laughs> by Philip Ree, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. And then it was like screenplay by or something. Like his name was in the the yeah. credits because he was mm-hmm. in the, the next star. Mm-hmm. I think after Eric Roberts, James Earl Jones, Sally uh, Kirkland was Philip Ree, and I'm oh, like, oh, who the hell is Philip Ree? Mm-hmm. He looks familiar, mm-hmm. right? And I was like, the reason why is probably because I didn't know it at the time. Uh, I've been staring at those box covers of Best of the Best right. 2, 3, I was, and 4. I was going to say, have you seen Best of the Best 2, 3, or 4? Because yeah. he's in all four movies. Right, there you go. So yeah. he is actually the karate uh, expert yes. that they cast in this movie. Yes. You know something else about him, don't you? No. <laughs> I, uh, I, so I did just a okay. cursory research because mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, where... Philip Ree mm-hmm. competed for, I believe, Team USA in a championship in 1980, and that formed the basis, there the inspiration is. I love it. for this movie. There it so is. he's the driving factor. He is the star, and the plot bears that out. Yeah. You think it's Eric Roberts, but oh no. So, I mean, they make it an ensemble. Yeah, but this is Philip Ree's movie. They just yeah. needed star power. Enter Eric Roberts. There you go. Yeah. So... Okay, so who, because so Philip Ree has like, I mean, his character, Tommy. Tommy. Tommy Lee. Tommy Lee's got <laughs> the backstory. He does. He's got the he's trauma. Got the motivation. He's, yeah. yeah. So maybe we go through each one of these guys who's selected and tell me who they are. Yeah. Um. So yeah, we started with Eric Roberts, right? He gets the letter that he's he's been asked to compete. And what we know of Eric Roberts' character, Alex, is that he is a father. Mm-hmm. He works in a factory, as you said, and he is the father of a small boy who's learning to ride a bike. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> what could his, possibly go in wrong? In a big, chunky sweater. Yes. His pride and joy. Yes. Right? And we're like, oh, man, that's going wrong. Look at him teaching that kid how to ride the bike. And the kid's like, mm-hmm. I can't stop. And yep. we're like, oh, my God. But that isn't how that scene is played at no. all. Missed yeah. opportunities. Yep. Very much so. <laughs> and then it cuts to, I believe, I thought that kid was in the karate school that was run by so did I. Tommy. But. Yeah. No, they, they went very different directions than what I thought. <laughs> so what <laughs> is uh, Alex's motivation? Why does he want to participate? He used to be a good fighter. He used to be a great fighter. That was his life. And then he suffered a tragedy in his life and we had a shoulder injury too. That's right. Double yep. tragedy. Yeah. So his, his shoulder's it, junk. As his mother said, his yeah. shoulder is junk. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I like the way yeah. that they have uh, Academy Award winner Louise Fletcher, right? That's right. From, uh, yeah, that's one flew correct. over the coo- Nurse Ratchet herself. Mm-hmm. One flew over the cuckoo's nest is in this for I think a dialogue scene that consists of uh, it's uh, two minutes, right? Yeah, and then later on she's just in the crowd chanting USA. Yeah, so yeah that's she's it. there, that's but it. she doesn't have anything else to say mm-hmm. or that's do. It. But she gets to say like, "Alex, your arm is all it's junk. Your shoulder's junk." And if you go into this, you could be paralyzed. Yeah. He's like, ah, mom. <laughs> right? <laughs> and we literally we literally had to look up to see how old Eric Roberts was in this movie. Because it's impossible to determine how Because his hair is. is like gray. It's like that dark gray color his it's, hair always is. Yeah, his hair but, has been the same color yeah. for 50 years. Yes. And he still looks like that? Like, yes, he's looked like, the same, he basically. He looks exactly the same. Just longer hair. That's yeah. the only and like eighties chunky sweaters, and that's yeah. the only difference. Yeah, and it's it's like they in, said he was thirty three. Yeah, it's I pinned like him in, down to thirty three when this movie yeah, came out. Yeah, it's like in Seinfeld when Frank Costanza oh, they do boy. flashback scenes of him in the army, and it's just him in a wig. Yeah, yeah. it's like that. Yeah, he's like he hasn't aged. Yeah. Same age. He's been also wasn't wasn't Costanza like thirty when Seinfeld started or something, <laughs> something like that, right? Yeah. Something horrifying Probably, yeah, like that. Yeah, like that. yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Jesus. Wow. Well, so he's got the he's got the junk shoulder from a previous right. injury that sidelined his martial arts career. He's Correct. healed from that now, right? But everybody warns him. But but Alex, you got that bum shoulder. I think mm-hmm. Eddie Bunker also says that to him. Um, but what's the other this is a double tragedy? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, so he lost his wife. His there wife you. died uh when his son was just a baby. Mm-hmm. Okay. We don't get really much more than that. He's a single just, dad. Yeah, and that just gives dead. him, like, you know, symp- the sympathy vote. That doesn't actually motivate him, right? It, no, it just gives him the, like, this is all I got. Right. Yeah. Like, that's it. I got nothing. I got nothing. I got to make my kid proud. <laughs> this is the only thing I've ever been good at. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Who else do we have on our on our team? Uh, Philip Ree. Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Tommy. Tommy owns a dojo. He's in char- He runs a very successful dojo, apparently, because we were commenting on how many kids were in that class. There was like thirty kids and in that like, class. A receptionist comes in to give him a letter. Like he, it's a very successful uh, business. celebrity dojo. No, no, this is like the receptionist what Cobra Kai was in the credits. Be. I like that. Fantastic. Tommy's receptionist. Yeah, that's perfect. I don't I remember her name. I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. I might have written it down. Anyway, um, so yeah, he's asked to compete. And do we want to get into that story yet? Or I don't know, because it seems like there are surprises and reveals there ahead. Are, for, yes. Because his is the primary driving. Okay. It's his story, really. Yeah. So he's been also <laughs> chosen. Mm-hmm. And he's going to go over there. So, yeah. um, And then we go to the tournament. No. There's, right? no nope. There we no? Go. Oh, Wait, nope. We got the rest of the people. Virgil? Do we talk about I know, Virgil? We don't, we don't, but we don't oh, meet gotcha. them okay. until the tournament. Yeah. Because okay. this is the tournament to determine who's going to. Right. Gotcha. So we've established yeah. two guys, and we're like, okay, these guys are going to, you know, you're like, I've seen movies oh, before. Oh, yeah. They're going to fight. And then they're yeah. going to form this bond of friendship, mm-hmm. and right? And they're going to end up the best. It's Rocky and Creed. Yeah. It's Rocky and Creed. Exactly. Yeah. For sure. Um. So, yeah, they go to a tournament because they don't know each other at this point. So they go to a tournament, and yeah. this tournament is going to decide who is selected for Team USA. Correct. And the tournament is run by James Earl Jones. Was he was he running the tournament? Well, he was the coach. Or he wasn't okay, running the, the tournament. Okay, the guy who's actually like, oh, sorry. Well, yeah. wasn't he? Was he? I thought that was the whole point. Like, we were running it to select the the people who are going to be. I got very confused because there was that guy that kept popping in and out. Right. We didn't he really understand. Energy. Right. Yeah. I like right. that guy. I like I've him seen too. him in other things. Oh, I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I don't remember his name. A, um, but he busted into the scene. He's like, wait, mm-hmm. God, something. All right. So James Earl Jones, though. I mean, you mm-hmm. got Darth Vader himself. Right. Yeah. Yelling throughout yeah. this movie in that <laughs> okay. amazing coach voice of his. Yeah. yeah. This brings us to. Tough love coach. My my second. Because my first was like, why the fuck is Chris Penn in a karate movie? Yeah. As a karate fighter. My second is, why the fuck is James Earl Jones a karate coach? Yeah. Right. Because you're like, well, he used to be a karate, you know, contender. And then no. it went south. And so then now he coaches or something. I just feel like he has a financial stake in it. Is what it feels like to me. <laughs> like, like, that, like It feels like, yeah, that's the motivating factor or something. Because well, he does have a motivation, yeah. but that also is a surprise that we will reveal. As right. We get it, it's right. Like, what? Yes. But still, I get what you're saying. Yeah. How did you even get there? Yeah. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, we'll get to that insane reveal. <laughs> like, I can see him being, I can see him being a football coach or a basketball right. coach, right? Right. In a movie, like that makes so sense to me. Football back, yeah. When yeah. Or ba- yeah. Like, because you can be, you can be James Earl Jones and be yelling at a football yeah. team. Like right. that makes sense. You right. can do that. Yeah. But a karate coach, I feel like. I mean, we want Mr. Miyagi, right? Like, yeah. let's be honest. Yeah, yeah. That's what I we think, want. Yeah. But we get Mr. Miyagi. Or do we? Do anyway, we? there's a surprise. So uh, <laughs> they bring in their Mr. Miyagi, and you're like, what? Okay. So uh, who else do we have? So on the team, mm-hmm. right? Well, we don't have. So these guys all fight, right? We right. meet different interesting characters. Yes. But that, ultimately. This is, this is where we meet Chris Penn, Travis. Yep. Um, who's a, just a jerk. He's an asshole cowboy. Yep. Um, and then we meet Virgil. Okay. Virgil is a very um, zen motivated Young man, um, very into yoga and meditation, and yeah. kind of a nerd. Kind of a nerd. Yep. Kind of adorable. Love him. Mm-hmm. And then there's Sonny, right? Who's Italian? Who's Italian? That's it. That's literally all we <laughs> get of the character. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He goes. I kept forgetting about him. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I think several. He has several lines that I think consist of him going. I'm Italian. Yeah. Yeah. You yes. Know? Why it's am like I? A, yeah. Why am I not getting any girls? I'm Italian. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's, mm-hmm. That's it. That's all we know about him. That's his lead. You know, when he's mm-hmm. introducing himself to Virgil, I'm yep. Italian. So mm-hmm. Sonny. Okay. Yep. 
Uh, so these team. are our five guys who are chosen. They are the best. The best. <laughs> these are the best, the best America can offer for karate. Okay. One of them is 35 years old with a junk shoulder. Yeah. So, this is the best of the best. And one of them is Chris Penn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can't. Okay, so I, but so right there, I no, got right some there. Questions. This movie, yeah. like, lo- it's not, already falling apart. It's not losing me. It still got me, but not in the way it wants. Me. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because the movie then, from I think this point on, starts intercutting bizarrely. I yeah. thought, um, v- you know, footage of the Korean team training. And they are a which is like military bunch. like yeah. training videos, yeah. yeah. Yes, they they're getting are... beat with rods and stuff. Correct. Yeah, doing and you're knuckle like, push-ups on rocks. Yeah, like these cats are training for Mortal Kombat. Yes. yes. <laughs> okay, and then in comparison, you go like, okay, and and Eric Roberts, and now we've got Chris Penn, Penn and, and <laughs> Eric Roberts doing yoga by a pool. It was like the most like vacation type you know, fitness compared yeah. to like their military regimen. It was ridiculous. I think yeah. it, it seems like America should have uh, aimed higher. You yeah. Know? Okay. Yeah. You know, thinking about the way this movie goes, America deserved everything they got, to be <laughs> honest. Like maybe we're the real villains in this story because yeah. it kind of seems like it. I mean, martial arts, maybe it's <laughs> yes. not like an American thing. Traditionally, it's there's a lot it's of, it's not, no. I mean, but there are, you know, I mean, Chuck Norris, right. It was like a big, I mean, there, there are, are, there are exceptions, exceptions to the rule, yeah. of course, but, but even still that, there's spans even, back like 70 years. Their history with martial arts goes back like hundreds, hundreds. of years. Yep. There's yeah, there's even a line later on because well, there's a lot of racism in this movie. <laughs> but there's even a line later on where they're like it's like a predominantly Asian sport. It's very yeah. it's very racist, but it's also very factual. <laughs> like, is, that, is that racist to say that? No, I mean there's other racist lines in this movie. Like the, that one repeat. joke. Yeah, I'm not really going to repeat bad. those. Yeah. But yeah. No. Okay, so they are chosen then by, and it's going to be James Earl Jones's uh, job to whip these guys into shape. So what we have is the Dirty right. Dozen, right? That's right. what it is, mm-hmm. kind of. And um, oh yeah, so there's another guy on well, right. the he's, team. Yeah, he's like the assistant coach slash like data guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is the actor Tom Everett. Have you ever seen him in anything before? He looked familiar. But yeah, I couldn't place him. Like he's been in a bunch of stuff, but my two key, like I remember him in Dances with Wolves at mm-hmm. the beginning because mm-hmm. he talked very much me like this, or you're going to lose a leg or whatever. <laughs> and Leatherface, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Three, but he's oh. a guy that you've seen like in a bunch mm-hmm. of stuff. And so yeah, his Don, I'm like he's not the team medic. He's yeah, assistant coach, yeah, but he he's... bunks with the players, yeah. and he seems like he's part of the and team. He's always getting the footage and stuff of the other teams. He's out there with a video yeah. camera. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. He and is then, just kind of like an assistant coach, I guess, huh? He yeah. is, yeah. And he uncovers a key piece of footage from the past. But we'll get to um, that. And then there's also a third coach that, right. is, that is brought in. She's a lady. That's her handicap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. I hope I, you'll see past that handicap. Yeah, yeah. that was I'm really a woman, funny. you know. <laughs> um, it's the eighties, right? Mm-hmm. So but the um, funny thing is, is that I don't think James Earl Jones was even going to point that out. Uh-huh. Like she just threw, she just like asserted that in there. I think he was just like, I don't need an assistant coach because I'm enough. I, because yeah, I, I, I have got one. this. And she was like, because I'm a woman, yeah. and that's my handicap. She's just heading it off. Right. She's heading off the assumptions. But in also, the room. Holly, you were right though. She was not dressed appropriately no, for the job at hand. She is wearing like a skirt suit with heels, with and heels. it's like if you show you know something about karate, shouldn't you at least come in like a more business casual yeah, like you don't have to wear a gi but at least like wear some sweats or something yeah <laughs> you know? some athletic shoes maybe yeah. you know like something. a blazer over some athleisure would be good you yeah. know like something that you could high kick in if you needed to to show you actually know how to do something right wear the chuck norris action jeans <laughs> you know 100 percent. Right. so this is where they needed cynthia roth right but no we got uh <laughs> sally keller or uh, sorry uh, sally kirkland mm-hmm. sally i get those kirkland. two confused mm-hmm. kellerman was in mash she was hot lips and mash yeah 
Kirkland has been in a ton of gonna, stuff. I was going to say, this chick better not have been hot lips because her mouth bothered me this whole <laughs> fucking movie. Her So her first scene, though, is her best scene in the movie, I, I thought, right? I mean, sure. She <laughs> comes in because we're told, you know, like, you know, they've hired yeah. another, a sensei, someone who studied yeah. in the Orient. No offense, like, but we're bringing in Wade. Yeah, we're bringing in Wade. <laughs> but it's like Christina Wade or something yeah. like that, Wade's right? Wade's her last name, yeah. And she comes in in and uh you know it's not even a job interview but it's basically that you know like yeah i'm here because they put me here and i know you are running the team but here's what i'm gonna bring and she doesn't blink at this entire sequence yeah this really bothered you colin she's like hypnotizing you like a snake maybe or something felt off putting maintain eye contact which is hard when your eye is like lower than the other (laughs) yeah her (laughs) eye line was all off like it it you know those scenes in To Die For when Nicole Kidman's like talking into the camera? Yes. It had that same kind of vibe to it, yeah. but that's, it. That, this movie was not going for that. No. It, this is just this actress's performance uh, choice, I guess. So what's her... What's she her, meant business. That's yeah, what they yes. were trying to yep. say. What's her job here? What are, what is she, she has secrets of yoga, mm-hmm. Buddhism, and Taoism on yeah. her side. Okay. She has access to secret information about these things that apparently no one else does, and she needs she to was share them with the team. In the East. Yeah. Yep. So there was a scene where she was explaining it to them, right? Mm-hmm. Like, in three months, I am going to turn you into, you know, like the best. Yeah. Uh, you're going to yeah, have, have peak fitness. You're going to be of sound, balanced mind, and because mental bull- health yeah. is as important as the physical for and this. And it's like, yeah. yes, I, I agree with you, but then she was like, because. Winning is, 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 what did she fucking say? She was like, winning is everything. Oh, it happens all the time. Yeah. yeah. Something like, and winning isn't just, it was the, yeah, Chris Penn just, is like, what's your phone, any questions? What's your phone number? He says, mm-hmm. yeah. and she's like, I'm here to show you how to win, how yeah, to teach you to win. And winning is winning temporary is, yeah. or something. It's it's, every day. It's, yeah. It's, and you're it's, like, what? it's like, that's not, like, that's, that's not Buddhism. Okay. That's not, that. <laughs> It's not an appropriate answer to the situation. No, like, not at all. <laughs> and so I, I saw the movie. Um, what, <laughs> what, what does she do? Because I was, you know, she, does, you're like, she teaches them yoga and meditation. That's all we see her do. In yeah. like montages. Yeah. That's it. And, and then not she's even, on the sidelines yeah. for like the tournament. But mm-hmm. it's like, I was sitting there going like, okay, like this is an underwritten role as all hell, and they yeah. cast you know Sally Kellerman to have a woman in the movie in in some capacity, and I know that we always say that like you know the love interest thing is you know kind of cliche, but it's like but it gives like a dramatic uh, tension to a movie, right. like, and if you yeah. don't have that, it was like. Because when she was first introduced, and I'm like, and the guy's got a dead wife, mm-hmm. you know, it's like, here's an opportunity. Right. Because that- even when when they first meet her and she's like explaining her purpose there, Eric Roberts is like sitting there like a little schoolgirl listening. Like he's just mm-hmm. enthralled by everything she's saying, but it doesn't like go anywhere. She's as, she's a, she's on the same level as Sonny to me. Like they're both yeah. just kind of useless yeah, characters. Yeah, exactly. It was, it was like, yeah. what the hell was the point of this, uh, of this character? But okay, we've got so <laughs> sure. we, yeah yeah. Um, There's a woman. Got it. There is a key scene, I guess, before the training begins in earnest, where the because the guys are going to have to swear off women, drugs, and alcohol, uh, alcohol yeah. for three, three months. months. Mm-hmm. So we're going to turn you into this, you know, iron fighter. But tonight, yeah, go you, nuts. It's your last I night. D- yeah, don't uh, this. This sounds like a good way to get like a shining situation, right? You have all these men kept in this space together and they don't have any vices or way to yeah, like blow off steam. No. Well, this is like blow a blow off steam, they're fighting. Oh, yeah, 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 that's yeah, true. Yeah. But you're, like you're honing that like yeah. that they're, one instinct. Right, yeah. right. <laughs> but they're literally hyper focusing that. Yep. But that's yeah. the thing, when you're hyper focusing violence, that's gonna bleed over into the other aspects of your life. You know what I'm saying? But there are like, no other aspects. Right, but they, they still have to <laughs> coexist together though. True. Like it just feels like they're creating a power keg the dinner table yeah At the yeah dinner, did no, I miss it? this is not how i want to live no when they're in the cafeteria and oh. start saying racist things and oh they're, they're yeah. Like yeah 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 oh right, 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 yeah, right yeah. okay yeah <laughs> that was before or after they went out to no, no. okay so they go out to a bar am i right this is like, it's it's like they go out to a honky tonk yeah. Yeah. yeah which i'm like why where is are it? they yeah where where does where this take place because i thought they were in la yeah that's what i thought but yeah. everybody is wearing cowboy hats travis fits in just yeah. perfect at this place 
Because the training facility is in LA. I mm-hmm. thought. Mm-hmm. So were they somewhere down south before they went to LA? I mean, they, they, I, yeah, I, don't I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't fucking know. Point, make sense. Uh, Alex fly, takes the last plane from Portland. So yeah. he mm-hmm. flies down there. Um, so they go to this bar and the idea is here we've got all these strangers right mm-hmm. and james Earl jones is like there's no individuals in the team mm-hmm. we're gonna build a team and so because we know that you know uh chris penn has already like offended at least three of the guys he's a hothead yep. yeah so are they gonna how are they gonna get him under control right. or what's gonna happen i guess that's the you know dramatic mm-hmm. thing is like He's just going to be a jerk, and how are they going to deal with this? So they go to this bar, and uh, Kane Hodder's there. Yes, looks uh, exactly the same. That <laughs> yeah. dude looks Please the Kurt. same. Yeah, was that his no, name? With a nice Kurt, mullet. Yeah. yeah, he's a pool player. Uh, he's got a hot girlfriend. The hot girlfriend is hit on by Chris Penn. This, of course, starts the uh, the big bar fight. Yeah. Oh well, there is like a little uh, thing that happened. You know, it's like all these guys are going out in their last night and they're going to try mm-hmm. and score and it's ironically virgil yeah. right who the meets a girl sweet, quiet nerdy zen dude yeah is the one that has the most game right yeah yeah um, that, this is not unusual folks yeah that's because he meditated before he went out no it's because of all of them he's the one i would sleep with too okay like, this is not unusual all right they all all of them suck <laughs> oh no i'd probably sleep with tommy <laughs> he's pretty cool so they so the bar fight happens yeah. and then it's got to be like, okay, now we have to actually like, you know, back up the guys who are on our team. Right. So mm-hmm. we're getting our, our uh, exhibition match preview. Right. Yes. Because right. it's team USA karate versus a bar full of rednecks. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's, and Kane Hodder. <laughs> and Kane Hodder with the smashed bottle. Yeah. It's, I, I like this because it is like. The slobs versus snobs kind of setup, which I always enjoy, and it does feel yeah. like a, like a poor imitation of like a roadhouse scene. It does, but yeah. I found this scene enjoyable, and they they take out literally every single yeah. person. And James Earl Jones is just like sitting while they're watching. Yep, taking notes. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, okay, enough, it's time to go. Who yep. cleans this up? Who pays for it? I don't know. Is right. it Who knows? But okay, so we've got their initial thing, and then we're gonna have about. Uh, I don't know, 45 minutes of training montage. So, mm-hmm. um, Bert, not Kurt. Ken Hatter's name was Bert. Sorry. Bert. Bert. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> this is the same year as Jason li- or Jason takes Manhattan. Oh, wow. Big year. I know. He was like, and he's, yeah. I'm like, was he a stunt coordinator? Sorry, I missed him. that in the credits, but he was in the movie. Um, good for him. So they train. We are shown the, um, most of this movie is training. Okay, so this is, I guess, where we have to get into the appeal of mm-hmm. these type of movies, okay. right? Yeah. There's a lot of, um, like, if you read the criticism of Rocky Four, I love Rocky Four. I, you know I love Rocky. You know that's my favorite. You okay. know this. We've talked about mm-hmm. this. Rocky the, Four is my favorite. But the criticism of Rocky Sorry, Four I get passionate. is that it's basically five or six music videos. It is. <laughs> I understand this, and I, I'm okay with that. Okay, but... Then you, if you compare that to this, different movies, <laughs> yeah, because this one has the montages of mm-hmm. people fighting and training. Yeah, it do- there, it even has an original song. It does. There's a couple like '80s um, rock songs, which I love. I love those too. You right, know, I get great. when they're out Fantastic. running track and they got to yeah. go, you know, whatever. And he's putting them to the, you know, yeah. Um. But it doesn't have like the Rocky train. It doesn't have the punch. No. No, it doesn't have the punch. Because we're seeing them, you know, we're seeing the standard, like they start off kind of sloppy and then we're watching them gradually get better yeah. throughout the training. But it doesn't have the panache like that Rocky has. Yeah. There were some of the training montages that didn't have any music or didn't have a score, you know. Yeah. It's also really weirdly lit. There's that scene where Tommy is really going at the punching bag and Eric Roberts has to come in and console him because of this big plot point that we're going to talk about. about But it's like in a dark room Mm -hmm. with a phantom white light somewhere off in the distance. Yeah. You know, highlight. And you're like, where the, where? And then I thought that a lot through this movie that it was like a shot in in the dark or they didn't have the money to actually like show you like what was around them. We just have to like turn the lights off. And I mean, I, I can't really, 
I can't really criticize it because I've never been in a three month karate training program. Maybe <laughs> right. that's how it works. Sensory deprivation. Maybe yeah. that's how it works. I don't know. It's at the bottom of a tank. It could be. Karate tank. Sure. Mm-hmm. You said that the roadhouse scene kind of compares to a scene in a roadhouse, but the fighting choreography. It's like I said, it's a lesser version. It's a, it's a poorer copy of it, but yeah, it's, Mm -hmm. but that scene, I feel like it looks better than the more professional fighting scenes. I just think it's because when, when you just have two people on a mat and there's nothing else around them, you kind of can't hide anything. There is a really great moment in the roadhouse scene. Mm -hmm that I wish would have had more focus. Michaela and I both audibly reacted to it mm-hmm. is Philip Ree kicks a cigarette out of a guy's mouth. Yeah, yeah that, that was awesome. Cool. And that was yeah. amazing. And I feel like that should have gotten more focus. It was like gentle and precise at the same like, time. Like he really did it. Yeah. Like, you yeah, it heard like, you heard it flick out. Yeah. Like, it was yeah. good. It was but dope. they didn't do a close up. Right. No. Or, you know, I guess you would overindulge and do like a slow motion or something like that. Yeah. But it's it's a wide shot. Yeah. You know that he did it. You saw it in real time, mm-hmm. I guess, you yeah. know, because he actually can do it. I got that was the impression I got mm-hmm. is like, yes. he is the guy to watch if you want he, it, the yes. thrills. Right. One hundred percent. And these other guys are like, they must have trained up in some way, but it's not comparable. No, they're not the best of the best. <laughs> and it's also missing reaction shots. There was a scene where I think yeah, uh, we're going to get to what best of the best actually means. Yeah. Yeah. yeah seriously. <laughs> Chris Penn walked by, I think, like Virgil hooking up and like the, he gives a look, but there was no close up on him. He's like in a sea of people. Right. And you're like you're missing, you know, these dramatic uh, insert moments. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Sally uh, Kirkland teaches them how to meditate. Um, mm-hmm. Virgil, of course, already knows this, so he's not gaining anything. Mm-hmm. Um, there's tough love, but we learn more um, about uh Tommy. We learn more about Tommy. Because he has nightmares. Right. There is a moment. Um, I, lo- I love the way they do scenes in this movie that just like I know they're I know they're putting them there because they're they're meaningful to what to the plot. But the way they do it, it just seems so random and pointless. And there's a scene where Eric Roberts and Tommy are in their room because they bunk together. And he's like, ah, what a day. Do you have any siblings, Tommy? Yeah. And he's like, No. Good night, and shuts off the light, and that's the scene. Yeah, that's the whole like, fucking scene. That was scene. abrupt. Yeah, it was. It was weird. But hopefully, you were paying attention. It was weird, but that clearly was important. important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah, we find out um, later on through a flashback okay. that Tommy did have a sibling at one point. <gasps> what? Yeah. Yes, he had a brother. Okay. Who also competed in karate tournaments. Get out. And we yes. see this flashback starts with the funniest way you can start a flashback. With a, ice cream. With a kid in a backwards baseball hat holding an ice cream cone in black and white. This and is young Tommy. Young Tommy. How, how else will you know he's young if he doesn't have a hat that's right. backwards and ice and cream? That's, yeah. And that's far too big for him. Yes. Yeah. I, they, you know, they had to resist just getting the propeller hat. That, oh, you know, that's yeah. what they wanted. Oh, yeah. They went with the baseball <laughs> hat instead. Yes. But yeah. 100%. And um, tragedy is. Um, Signified by ice cream falling to the ground. Yes. When his brother takes a deathly blow. Yep. Yeah. And mm-hmm. is killed during a tournament. Mm-hmm. And he is killed by. Eye patch guy. Eye yeah, patch I don't guy. remember. The his very fighter name. that Tommy's going to have to fight. What? Yeah. what kind of irony is this? Oh, oh my, my God. God. So all of a sudden, at like minute 35 in the movie or more than that, <laughs> it's like, oh, this is the dramatic stakes. Oh. Tommy is is going to fight the guy who killed his brother. Right. Then we get more like Tommy uh, motivation and psychological input. Mm -hmm. Uh, Tommy, when he fights, he always pulls back at the last pulls his punches. Yeah. Mm -hmm. James Earl Jones is uh, a raging man. Yeah. You're not giving a hundred percent. You're not going to win. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that was a terrible James Earl Jones. (laughs) I didn't even try. It's hard to do. (laughs) Didn't even try. Don, the data guy, right, mm-hmm. unearths Don, something. the data guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? yeah. He goes, he has footage of every event, like, ever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, on and on, on, on floppy, floppy disks. disks. Mm-hmm. Well, he didn't yeah. have the footage on floppy disks. Probably he's got, like, one I was like, yeah, seriously. Floppy disk. No. But <laughs> he's got I, tapes. But he, right. He has, he's got beta. Yeah, he's got, he's got beta tapes, and he, but he had a nice stack of floppies. That was nice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I love 80s technology. So he has found the actual black and white footage of. Mm -hmm. um, Yeah, because in Tommy's file, there's pages missing. 
which is another random scene that we don't yeah. know why is there. Right. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. that scene, mm-hmm. um, Sally Kirkland. Yes. Right. She's comes looked- into it's because I think um, was that when when Tommy quits wants to quit or was it before that? I think it was. Before it's before that. that. It's, it's because that, he's yeah. pulling his punches, right? Yeah. And um, Sally Kirkland then goes into Don, the data guy, mm-hmm. and wants to see Tommy's file. And it's like, why are the, you know, why are there pages been... missing? And how do they know there's pages missing? Are they numbered? Right. I think he says there's three pages missing. I think she does. My think... question is, didn't he take the pages at right? Who took the fucking pages? Right. So he says, you know, there's this tape. Now, we're shown him and James Earl Jones watching the tape, and James Earl Jones reacts by saying, who else has seen this? And Don's like, nobody. And James Earl Jones says, let's keep it that way. Mm. Okay? Secrets. You got to put a pin in that, too, although I I did not realize that I had to. Right. More scenes because the visual language to... doesn't tell you this is important and you need right. to remember it. It's more random scenes that you that are supposed to be important, but we don't know why. Right. Well, it did set up a scene where James Earl Jones is trying to encourage Tommy and he's like, you're holding back. Nothing's going to change. You know what happened? You know, and there's like there, there's decent you know, reaction shots. that were like, oh, shit. James, that means James Earl Jones knows about the incident he knows about his brother's death you know and he's using that to try and encourage him but uh sally kirkland goes in and apparently uh watches the tape and uh confronts james earl jones yep okay <laughs> yeah, that, that's how i remember to it what effect what what are we doing as a movie with Mm-hmm. with that scene that we haven't already done. Mm-hmm. She goes, I guess it's the winning isn't everything speech. Even though, mm-hmm. because he's like, we, I, we're here, our one objective is to win, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. I, I don't yeah, know. No, I don't know. I, yeah. I got nothing. Okay, because it's never dealt with again. No. No, and she's... It's just now she knows, mm-hmm. and we're like, okay, what's that going to do to things? Right. Nothing. <laughs> You, you're you're not wrong. <laughs> I wish I had more to. Unless I'm forgetting to, something, no, That's I, I'm relying so, on you guys. Are like I, I that just went nowhere. Uh, um, no, I wish I I wish I got something that you missed, but I don't think that's the case. Mm-mm. Okay, so um, yeah, so where are we at? What are we doing? All right, we're gonna we're gonna jump back from Tommy for a moment, okay. right? Because there are yeah. other people in this uh, in this cast. Yeah, just and not Eric, Sonny. <laughs> Eric Roberts, right? Eric Roberts. has. An issue. He does. Um, as he's training. And they're all like, they're starting to get along and the team is building. Things, and are, things going are going well. Good. Yep. And then. He gets a phone call. Yep. A dreaded phone call from home. Your son was hit by a car. <laughs> 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 so how do they reveal that to us? He says, my son was hit by a car. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in, a, in a line of dialogue. I have a question. Are they allowed to have contact with the outside world while they're away at this well, uh, uh, I thought they weren't, but apparently they are. Apparently I mean, I assume it's an emergency, call. right? Yeah. yeah, but I'm wondering, is this like when, like, you know, people get the real world house, or, like, they don't have cell phones, they just have the landline in the real world house, right, and right. They, they get, like, everyone gets, like, their 30 <laughs> minutes a day of phone time or whatever. Is I that what it's so. like, you I know? It like, is, yeah. Because how much, wh- where did the distraction stop? You know what I'm right. saying? Because yeah. if that's what it's about, yeah. how much do you cut these people off? Right. Like astronauts. And well, this I'm is sure like, talk to people. if you watch <laughs> this next scene between James Earl Jones and and Eric Roberts, and you don't disagree with James Earl Jones, you are in a cult because that's right. what has happened to these people. Like Eric Roberts is trying to free this cult atmosphere that demands he put karate above his son's life. Correct. Yeah. This is a good wild like, to, to yeah. throw this into the mix, yes. right? Is your this is a conflict. He's like, my son. Well, because I think he finds out like a little later, like the kid, not only he might lose his leg, you know, like, yeah, Jesus. Yeah. At, this bad. Point, yeah, yeah. at this point, that's what he knows. We didn't yeah. see this scene. OK, yeah. this is where I think I, I don't know if I fault the movie or not, but it's like the phone rings. He gets a call and then we're like, oh, my God. He's like, when did this happen? Runs down the hallway, mm-hmm. runs in. I got to talk to you, James Earl Jones. And we go outside. There's another scene. And that's where he's like, my son's been hit. I got to go home. And James Earl Jones is like, if you leave, you can't come back. He's like, what are you serious? Isn't yeah. my son? He's been hit. James Earl Jones says, 
don't care. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not my yeah. problem. He's like, it's not my job to care or something yeah, like that. Not he my says, problem. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, bro. Th- we leave that, in two days. That's what I'm saying. Why is he so dedicated to this? I think, I mean, you know, we learn more about it in the third yeah, act. I was like, but we like, find out why. but what is like, <laughs> What is the lie he's telling people as to why he is so dedicated right. to this? Because this is extreme. This right, is, because every, every single behavior. person in that room should be questioning why he's saying. Yeah, exactly. Every single person should be like, hey, bro, what the fuck are you talking yeah. about? He needs to leave. Why is like, it so serious? Yeah. they No one's questioning him and they all should be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Eric Roberts quits the team. I thought there was going to be a moment where like, you know, because I'm like, okay, team building has happened. Mm-hmm. Maybe they'll all. I quit. thought they were all going to quit. Yeah. Like if, if he's out, we're out. And you it's know? like, oh shit, I actually did build yeah. a team with mm-hmm. these guys. And now yeah. mm-hmm. But no, they keep I'm, going. I think yeah. that's when we get the Sally Kirkland. Like, like, we, have a, we have a subtle like confrontation when they go to James Earl Jones and like, you should bring back Alex and Tommy. Like mm-hmm. there, yeah. is, there is that moment later, but it's not like solidarity. It's just like, hey, mm-hmm. <laughs> we're going to lose without them. Because then, yeah, in quick succession, I think like the same, yeah, because Tommy is a uh, Yelled at because right. he's pulling his he's punches. He's pulling his punches because they have that that kicking bag thing that measures the speed yeah. and and strength of their kicks. And so and James can, Earl Jones yeah. yells at him, and he lets go and kicks Virgil in the next week. Mm-hmm. They may have killed Virgil. And either. Virgil's out cold, and they're like, "He's fine. He's just resting." Yeah, and they're like, "No, get <laughs> like, the no, medics." No, but no, they're just he was out not face. okay. <laughs> they don't have a team medic. Like they just they're they're saying Virgil just yeah. slapping his like, face around for a you, long time. Like you hired Sally Kirkland, and you and you could have hired a medic. Yeah, like and, well, what are you doing? It's like it's like in the office when they made them. Uh, when they made Jim and Michael co co-managers, co-managers. Yeah. instead of, it's like, why would you hire two people why to do one do person's that? job? Yeah. They hired two assistant coaches instead right. of hiring a medic and, a, yeah. and an yeah, assistant coach. Yeah. yeah. I like it. I was surprised that they didn't cut the scene earlier. Cause it felt like it went on a lot longer than it, it should have. Right. Yeah. Quite some time. And maybe that's why it felt so comical because they just kept repeating. Yeah. Virgil. Wake Virgil. up, Virgil. <laughs> Maybe he was supposed to cut a lot earlier. And then, than finally, that, you know? and then he finally kind of wakes up. They're like, Virgil, do you know where you are? He's like, um, on the floor. Yeah. It's a good comeback. Yep. It's, I like that. Is. I enjoyed yeah. it. This is not a bad line. Yeah, no, I was fine. <laughs> I was fine with Virgil. Yeah. Yeah. I like that all the, the team members have distinct personalities and you can like tell them apart, except for like, you know, Sonny. I was gonna yeah. say but, Sonny the Italian. Yeah. Sonny's the but Italian. That's it. That's it. So now Tommy's <laughs> quitting the team. Yeah. Right. And inexplicably Eric Roberts chases him out of the gym and is like and Virgil's hit- gonna be fine and we're like wait weren't you missing from that you because yeah. you quit before he's like you gotta be on the team if you quit now you're a loser you know yeah. and Tommy's like I'm getting on my motorcycle and I'm going I can't maybe do this again. it's just like Triggered. his hair's magic and it picks up vibes maybe because <laughs> it's so glorious and flowing mm-hmm. maybe it just like picks up the energy around him maybe right sure why not but Tommy. I'm, I'm not I'm not kidding. His hair was distracting in this mm-hmm. scene. It was that luscious. There was another scene I was distracted by where uh, James Earl Jones came out of a room like yelling at the uh, the, 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 right. the general manager or whatever. Right. It was like, if you're going to fire me, fire me. But I'm like going to do this job until and we're like, what the fuck just happened? There's no yeah. context for this. I thought maybe it was a ploy to get them to like rally in some way, but no, it's like, it's from a scene that's right. missing. Cause at this point they've approached James Earl Jones and they're like, uh, the, the remaining team members are like, Hey, we need Alex and Tommy or we're not going to win. You got to right. bring them back. Right. That does happen before that. Yeah. It happens before that. And that's, and that's, where- that's why they're fighting. Although we don't see that. Because that's why James Earl yeah. Jones is like, huh, maybe I actually did like create a team here. And he's like, the plane leaves at 20 hundred hours, you mm-hmm. know? And I thought that meant he's basically telling them that they, ha- if they go, cause they're like, we need to get them back. And I know you said they're out forever, but we need to get them back. Mm-hmm. I thought it was like a code for them to go and re-recruit them. Right. And they'd be welcome Like back you've got this them. much time, go get them. But no, no, it's just. James Earl Jones shows up at the uh, at Eric Roberts place to you know persuade him to come back. Oh no, Eric Roberts hasn't left. He just shows up at his room. Oh right, he yeah. hasn't left. <laughs> oh, because he comes back and he's like, "I came back on the first plane. I need to be back. This is you want me to beg? You want me to beg?" Yeah. And that <laughs> and he's like, "You're still out." It was, supposed then, to, it was supposed to be a serious scene, but it was pretty funny. Yeah, because we got like an Academy Award. Nominee, act, nominee yeah. actor here gives it his, gives you it know, teary eyed. Yep. Yeah. Eric um, Roberts. 
And is this the scene then, because I think this is intercut maybe with the scene of Tommy riding his bike and he sees another kid with uh, ice cream. We're like, oh, shit, this is going on again. Oh, Tommy yes. on his motorcycle. Yes. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yeah, because yep. that is the sign tragedy is yeah. about to strike. Ice cream. He's driving He's driving home through the Hollywood Hills and mm-hmm. he stops at a, at a gas station and sees a little boy with an ice cream cone. And he, he drops the ice cream cone. But then the little boy's older brother gives him his ice cream cone yep. and gives him a little hair ruffle. And their yeah. life is perfect and idyllic. Yeah. And Tommy smiles because he knows. I don't know what he fucking knows. I know. But he knows. Is I that saying like I can get retribution for my like brother, I guess? I don't know. I don't know. I guess. I guess. I, guess. I don't know. The, I the love do of brother, brother. I don't know. I got to like, do it for my brother. Yeah. So then he turns around and he goes back. Yeah. <laughs> And then there is good a thing scene. he saw that ice cream. It's always ice cream with them. Ice cream, I tell you, it's magic. Mm-hmm. I keep talking about that. I'm, I'm coming back to it again because yeah, no. I think this is where it actually happens. The scene where um, uh, Sally Kellerman is like, the, I saw the, the next, tape. The next big secret of the movie. Yeah. yeah. And James Earl Jones says, "You don't understand, like what I'm sending these guys in to do." Yeah, they could die. Yep. People have died. I was there. I was the coach when Tommy's brother died. And we're like, what? Because then I'm like, is, you know, then your mind goes like, Wait, does Tommy know that right. this is the same coach yeah, that coached yeah. his brother? Why is he okay with this? This doesn't make any sense. Like, I wasn't giving it my all. So the boys were giving it their all. And that's why a life was lost. Yeah. Yeah, so now we're like, oh, that's why the that coach is like, Look, that's, that's why, why he's, why he's so driven. Hard yep. ass. I have to be a hard ass. I have to make them do their best. I yeah, won't but let it happen again. But it's fucking sadistic for him to set up Tommy against Eye Patch Guy. Right? That's fucking mean. He's the only, he's the only one that can do who's it. Who's going to be able to do it? But yep. like, that is some emotional torture you are putting on your t- your fighter yeah. there. Like, yes. Wow. And it all just so you could. All just for winning, and then they don't even fucking uh, win. Uh, right? They don't even win. Uh, then the, the yeah, the next big yeah. <laughs> All this torture <laughs> and because, because abuse, a, and they don't even win. They don't win. I want to. I want to just. <laughs> they're this, not the best of the, the best. The best of the best is Korea. I yes. want that to be perfectly clear to all of our listeners. The best of the best is the fucking Korea team. Yes. Yes. This is so. A all shock. this is for naught. It's for and nothing. It's yeah. Surprise. Eric Roberts is not the star of this movie. Yeah. It's Tommy, and they yeah. are not the best of the best. It's yeah. Korea. This movie is lies. It's all lies. Yes. It's and how this happens <gasps> is the most bizarre. I thought it was. Very it's bizarre. so weird. Yeah. They go to the championship. Yeah, and, they go to the tournament that's just Korea and U.S. Mm-hmm. Yep, and they yeah. get their asses handed to them. Well, uh, Italy, the Italian guy, Sonny, he gets he his gets, ass he handed gets to his him. Ass kicked. Yep. Uh, like he's out like right away. He's out much. right away. Virgil gets his ass kicked. Yep, and then it's uh, up to Travis, mm-hmm. and he gets his ass kicked. And yep. so it's like, man, America is losing mm-hmm. points to yep. the Koreans. And his conduct was bad, so they were going to like dock him points or whatever. Because, because he's yeah. a brawler. He got, yeah, he got he's pissed. a hothead. He yeah. couldn't get it, keep his shit in check. Yeah, yeah. And even though James Earl Jones, so a lot of good does like, he's kind of like James Earl does like stop it, and then smiles. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> then again, what was the point of them bringing in the second assistant coach? Because wasn't she supposed to balance them mentally? She sure did a Correct. shit job with him. Correct. That's what I'm saying. This is what she I'm, has yeah. no impact on the movie. I don't Correct. think so. No. Other than to introduce the I, the yeah. phantom yeah. of Eastern philosophy, yeah. which is never and, and for actually the, and for that explored. Moment, no. <laughs> yeah. And no. for that moment when Eric Roberts hears, Dad, and he looks up and he's like, hey, my son's here. Who brought my son here? And she's like, points yeah. to James Earl Jones, and he yep. just kind of smiles. Oh, because the kid's out of the coma, by yeah. the way. Oh, yeah, the uh, kid's yeah. fine. He, yeah. He's fine. Yeah, I think, yeah, yeah he gets fine. there, and the kid wakes up. And yeah, it's like, fine. Ah, okay. Everything's fine. There's yep. no consequences. No. 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 So it's resolved real quick. Yep. The, the the tournament begins to hinge on, there's only two guys left. Yeah. It's Eric Roberts right. and Tommy. Right. Right? So Eric Roberts gets into the ring, and there's a uh, rousing martial arts battle that takes place now i've seen the karate kid <laughs> yeah. i mean you know there's sure. all well, you've seen all these karate movies yeah, right. right i would put blood sport uh had mm-hmm. a better sequence right i think karate that kid. goes without saying <laughs> yeah think, like was this a good no, karate, no, like, no. Especially because the bar scene was better and more interesting. Yeah. So this was boring. Yeah. And we've already established that Tommy Lee or Philip Ree is the 
fighter in and this we're movie. holding him right. on. We he's know the he's the coming final next. Fight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's Eric like Roberts, watching Chris Penn fight oh, instead. Jesus. Yeah, yeah, and they're doing all the editing tricks they can. Yep. Uh, you know, it was more entertaining to watch Chris Penn learn to dance in Footloose. Yeah, you know what I always <laughs> love about these movies though, because um, you know, whenever they bring like uh, Western non martial artists uh actors into Mm -hmm. these they always employ like this team of um actual martial artists like who have done shit on camera and dozens of hundreds of Mm -hmm. and i always like watching them in these scenes because they're actually um you know they're dumbing it down they're dumbing it down Mm -hmm. but they're all they're they're doing all these things that you know that they could like walk all over this guy yeah but they're able to play it in a way that's like oh he Mm -hmm. kicked me yeah you know he hit me it's like they're actually doing the work they're doing (laughs) they're doing like like, swing at me and i'll sell it they're (laughs) doing like a legitimate dance yeah they're actually yeah they're performing yeah it's it's sad (laughs) eric roberts i'm gonna this is gonna shock you takes one to his uh injured junk shoulder. His junk shoulder. Yes. In case you forgot, his shoulder's junk. Yep. <laughs> and and uh, it's out of the socket. And he's just screaming, oh, pop, pop, it! It! Pop, pop it! Pop it! Pop it! Pop it! Pop it! And this is when Holly and I had the revelation that everything It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia has ever done has been influenced by this movie because <laughs> the karate, the sense of humor, the way this is all done, this, this is Mac's this favorite is movie. Absolutely, absolutely Mac's favorite it's movie. It's just like, this is 100%. the tone of everything they've ever done. Is pop like it! Yeah. <laughs> and they do. They, they pop do it back. Pop it. Yep, but he can't use it. Yeah. Then they have to wrap it up. But if he can just stand up for 30 more seconds, but he delivers a flying kick to the jaw that sends this Mm -hmm. opponent into the stands. Because they're like, well, it's Eric Roberts. We gotta at least give him like a winning kick. He's not the final fight. We at least have to give him like a glory moment, you know? I know. He gets like the Rocky stuff where they're like coaching him, you know, like on the you know, on the sidelines in between, Mm -hmm. you know, they're pouring water on him and he's all bloodied and blood. He Um, literally has the cut me except it's pop it. Pop it. Yeah. 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 Um, so then it's up to Tommy to take us home then, I guess. And so then we're like, well, of course, Tommy's actually, this is a movie about, uh, Tommy. You thought it was Eric Roberts. Um, so yeah. So all these twists, cause there's been a lot of twists in this movie. There's one more (laughs) that we've already. Yeah. Tommy gets into the ring with the eye patch, the Mm -hmm. guy who killed his brother Mm -hmm. and, um, he beats this guy senseless mm-hmm. uh, by the end of it and but the guy it's like he just has to stay down and america wins but the guy stands up staggering mm-hmm. busted up as and tommy gets ready he to wants to kill do it. him yeah he know? wants to give him the final death blow yeah and all his team everyone's like no 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 no, James Earl Jones yelling yeah. at you, no, no. twice emphatically, yep. like, you're going to stop what you're doing. Emphatically, but not, not no. moving a muscle, though. Like, there not, was zero yeah. no effort. No, edu- no. no urgency in that. No. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, he's got the voice. I mean, what do you really, James Earl Jones, that does the work of, like, a lot of us uh, regular Very people. true. It, yeah, it does. But. <laughs> but it very much reminded me of Gene Wilder and Willy Wonka. No, yeah. stop. Don't do that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. So... He doesn't kill the guy. No, he spares him. He lets him stand there. The counter, the clock runs out. And that means that Team Korea wins the championship. Yeah, Korea wins. And so Team Korea gets a bunch of medals and they're standing there. And we're like, what the? Wait a second. (laughs) And then one by one. (laughs) Well, the first of all, because it's a big deal. It's like, oh, there seems to be the announcer. There seems to be some action on the on the ring. uh, Team Korea fighter is approaching the American team. And it's eye patch. It's eye patch. And he goes over and he delivered. He has lost his eye patch, by the way. We see the the scarred dead eye. And he approaches uh, Tommy, mm-hmm. and he said, "Actually, I think it was like it was a pretty well written. It was a good line, speech. but it like to yeah, spare yeah. a life, you know, is to earn honor, dignity, yeah. and respect. Basically, but, like you won because you made the right moral decision. Yeah, you're and, the winner. And yeah. I, you know, your brother was a great fighter, 
And I regret that day. Yep, yeah, I, I am deeply sorry for your yeah. loss, and I I will be your brother now. Yeah, yeah. I submit myself as your brother. It's, it's not it's, it's not a bad speech. Eric Roberts, not a bad speech. Is just a mess over on the corner watching this, and uh, and the uh, eye patch fighter gives his medal to Tommy. Yeah, and then yes, yeah, surprisingly, all the other Korean. Yeah. Fighters. Because literally the other fighter goes up to Eric Roberts. He's like, I've read all about you. Right. I know your story. And then Take hands him his medal. medal. Yeah. And then the other ones do the same. And then freeze frame. They will be done. Korea literally gives like forfeits and gives them the gold because they pity them. Yes. <laughs> yes. That is how this fucking karate movie ends. Yep. Then- Korea pities the U.S. and gives them their gold medals. And then we freeze frame. Yep. See, That's the end it. of this goddamn no. movie. You're not the best of the best. No. Korea is the best of the best. That's the That's end of crazy. this fucking movie. Nothing's really resolved. No. Well, the storyline between Tommy and uh, and I guess I guess James Earl Jones, Tommy, and Eye Patch. That's yeah. resolved. Yeah. I I mean I what they resolved it by what fighting and then stopping. No, it's resolved. Yeah, I feel like it needed more finality. Yeah. Him, you know, and so then James Earl Jones is like, okay, I got these two guys together, you know, and you know, I suppose he didn't win though. You're right. Right. Yeah. Resolved. But like, so what? Next year, are these two gonna fight each other again? Then what? Is that you just? I don't know. It's it's. I feel like it would have been more final, obviously, to just kill the guy. But I get that the movie's not <laughs> yeah. on that level. Yeah. You know. Yeah. This is. This movie is this movie is more um, friendship based. Yeah, it really is. It, I thought it was going to have more of an eye for an eye mentality, and it no, did not. It was no, it was take as, the high road mentality. Yeah, there's not as much revenge in this as there is like friendship based. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's all about team bonding. Yeah. It reminded oh, it, uh, reminded me of Miami Connection. Actually. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, but the team bonding thing then is that why so many people love this movie? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not one of those people. So I'm, I'm hoping some of our listeners wrote in and told us why they like it so yeah. much. Well, guess what? Some of our listeners did write in about this movie. That's great. Okay. I'm anxious to hear. Well, we are going to tell you <laughs> what we thought of tonight's movie, but uh, stay tuned. First of all, we're going to read some of your mail. And to do that, we're going to have to summon our mailman, Igor, bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. He has a black belt. In <laughs> it's like a black skin belt. Yeah, it's a skin belt. <laughs> yeah, skin belt. He just, yeah, tanned yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. He, just, he made it himself. Yeah, yeah. made it himself. Yep. Yeah. Um, well, we should let the good folks at home know how they can reach us, how they can participate on this interactive portion of our show by following along on Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Or X. At Sat Freak Show. Or you can email us directly. Saturday Night Freak Show, Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram and threads at Saturday Night Freak Show. Um, MF Mad, the keeper of the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame. Good, sir. Wants to know that we've inducted two people Ooh, wow. to the wall. Two. Chris Penn and Eric Roberts? No. Damn. James Earl Jones. Oh. Because okay. we watched the Star Wars Holiday Special. Oh, we did. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we yes, did. we did. We did. And we also watched Conan the Barbarian. We did. Oh, yes. shit. Yes. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. Cool. Uh, and Love it. Eddie Bunker, because he was uh, he was Stan in this. That was his character's name. Uh, he's seen again, like, cheering at the bar, mm-hmm. like... Uh-huh. Uh, but yeah. apparently he was Captain Holmes in Tango and Cash, which we just watched. Nice. Oh. And he was also in The Running Man. Uh, oh, that's way back. That's I don't think back. I was here yeah. for that one. I don't think okay. I was either. Well, about tonight's movie, the best of the best, uh, Dom Cree writes up, in Dom? and says, if I don't get to write a review, I just want to ask, is Best of the Best by Stubblefield and Hall in the top five made for action movie songs? Easily, it's mine. Yeah, it's got to be. How's it go? I mean... No, it's not the best, the best, the best, because that's the Karate Kid. Right. This mm-hmm. is not that song. Right. And no. it's it's what I want to keep singing. Yeah, I want to keep yeah. singing the Karate Kid the song. Karate right. It's not what it is. I have right. already forgotten how this song goes. 
It was good though. Sorry, now. In the in the moment, we <laughs> yeah. loved it. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> uh, Novato Judoka says, "Yes, solid choice. Granted, it's low tier on action movies, but what a cast! Mm-hmm. To me, Philip Ree is the star of the movie since I first saw it as a kid. The most annoying thing to me about the movie now is they constantly call it karate instead of taekwondo. Come yeah. on, Ahmed Rashad, you're better than that. This is true. Um, Ahmed Rashad, I know he was in the credits as himself. He was the it was the announcer, wasn't he? The broadcaster. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Uh, Joshua Owens writes in and says, I literally just watched this a few weeks ago. Looks like we're enjoying some of the same movies this summer. Yay. I absolutely love these cheesy martial arts movies, but they are a go to for me. In all mm-hmm. honesty, I'd say you don't have to watch best of the best movies, but if you're into this style of movie, it's a fun watch and lots of bad writing, in my opinion. Uh, also, this is not a karate tournament. It's 100% Taekwondo. Yes. Hope you all had fun with it. Uh, Simon Carter says, it wasn't taiko- Taekwondo. <laughs> or wasn't it Taekwondo, but Eric Roberts just kept calling it karate? Correct. Either way, it's a fun, <laughs> cheesy movie. And one of the few cases where there's an argument that the sequel may be better than the original. Oh, Sean just got like a shiver somewhere <laughs> hearing that. He's know, like suddenly getting this. the feeling of why do I need to watch Best of the Best 2 all of a sudden right now? <laughs> it's happening right now. So here's what's kind of troubling. Simon says... Uh, Simon says? Yeah, <laughs> he, was, he was out after the fourth entry. Oh, after... Wow, okay. After the fourth entry? Which well, I thought there only was four. There are. Are there yeah. more? No. Okay, because that kind of alludes to like I was I no, stopped there's at four. four out of there's sixteen four. best of best nope, movies. There's okay. four. It's four. <laughs> yeah. Uh, last week we watched a movie called Old. Uh, mm-hmm. Millitime writes in and says, "Sean in the house, good pick, my man. You can never go wrong with an M Night flick." Oh, you can. You can. You really can. It, I would say it's fifty fifty. Yeah. If you're lucky, it's a, it's a good chance you'll go yeah. wrong with it. Uh, Travis Legler says, so when Michaela says she wants to see the body horror of people aging, she wanted to see the death of Walter Donovan for Indiana Jones and the Temple of Doom or the Last Crusade, but just slower. Yeah, I mean, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Lucas Accardo says, great episode. I knew it'd be fun. One curious guilty pleasure, no doubt, but more cheers from Buenos Aires. Oh, thanks. Oh, yay. I've um, been to Buenos Aires. It's beautiful. That's cool. Well, there you go. <laughs> um... Michael Whitaker is talking. So we were talking about other M Night Shyamalan movies and Split in particular on that episode. Uh, Michael Whitaker says, "Fun fact about Split: They filmed that opening scene by my apartment at the King of Prussia Mall, which is the largest mall in America in terms of retail space." Is that true? I thought it was the Mall, I thought of, it was America the mall of America mm. in Minnesota. Well, but I think. They're saying if you don't count the theme park oh, in right. oh. America, like the restaurant, yeah, theme parks, yeah, and yeah, because the novelty stuff, yeah, yeah, because the yeah. big thing in Mall of America is the theme park inside. Yeah. Camp, it was Camp Snoopy. I don't know what the fuck it is now. That's what <laughs> yeah, it was in the nineties. It, it was that when Snoopy. I went there. Yeah, yeah, um, and, and, and had like the the um the rip the. The rip shot, rip shot, rip something. I don't know. Oh. The roller coaster. Yeah. The roller coaster. Something. It was fun. Mm-hmm. They still have, well, there's just still a roller yeah, coaster. Yeah, it's still is in it, there. It's it, just is not. It like Legoland now it's, or something? It always gets rebranded like, something. Yeah. yeah. But, I always like the, yeah. I always like the line in Drop Dead Gorgeous, and it's like, you think the Mall of America would have the parking lot of America. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it does not. Movie. Mm-hmm. Um, one more comment about old Mike Kling writes in and says, old was a frequent rental on the now defunct Red Box. Oh, really? Mm. Huh. Yep, pour one out for Redbox. Uh, um, Sean is upset about that, I'm sure, too. He was yeah. the last person I knew using Redbox. Yeah. <laughs> Renting Blu-rays and DVDs yeah. from the Redbox. I, um, I don't think I used it once. Mm-hmm. Two weeks mm-hmm. pr- prior to the old, we watched a movie called Maxine. Mm-hmm. Action it's Dude dead. writes in to say, <laughs> hey, first off, happy belated congratulations to the Saturday Night Freak Show. I believe that was our 600. 600. Thanks, was. Action Dude. So, Thank you. Uh, he says, you're like a troop of demented <laughs> Energizer bunnies who keep going and going and going, and, and we're all better for it. Second, um. I liked Maxine. <laughs> it's not a perfect movie, but it's enjoyable. Movies and TV properties, which blend in film production as a component in the plot, are fascinating to me. Yes. Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and The Offer yeah. are two of my favorites in recent years. For sure. I think we all get it like it's catnip for all of us here, oh, right? Yeah. Like that, we're already automatically going to like it more just because it's set in the movie making world, yeah. which just we makes it, it so much cooler. <laughs> totally agree. 
Always love hearing from Action Dude. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I missed this one on the best of the best, but Joseph Rodriguez writes in and says, I just want to say that y'all are one of my favorite podcasts. The chemistry and dynamic between the four of you is almost unmatched by most movie podcasters. With that being said, in my humble opinion, I feel at best of the best two strikes me as more of a freak show joint. Uh, well, well that's, thank you so much thank for you. It was very that kind. compliment. That's yeah. so nice. Now we definitely got to do it. If people keep telling us we got to do it. <laughs> yeah, I, I do. Yeah. 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 We'll, yeah. Best of the best two. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. Eric Roberts comes back, I think. <laughs> he does. Okay. Oh, all right. Well, yeah. thank you all. <laughs> I'll, I'll go over it a little bit. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thank you all. Uh, sincerely, we appreciate you all writing in and listening. Colin, what did you think of best of the best? Um, I've seen my share of uh, karate movies. Um, You're welcome. Yep. Yes, especially here. Yeah, I know. Yeah, uh, yeah. You are like I the, bring a lot of them. The, yeah. the top purveyor of um, it's a sickness. Yeah, we all have our you know, diseases. You know, it's not really my genre, so I think that's why I mm-hmm. have uh, you know because they all follow. I mean, I suppose it's like a lot of sports movies, yeah. right? They all follow so this, a similar So this template. one must have really thrown you then, because there's it was a twist. It was a shocking yeah. ending, for sure. Um, <laughs> the ending, wow. I thought, um, yeah, it, well, yeah, at the end of it, I'm like, this is, movie is just, like, nuts. Um, but, I mean, even as we were going through it, I'm like, the, 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 the fact that there seem to be scenes that we're missing, but we included parts of them anyway. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking of the, uh, you know, uh, the, the dressing down that uh, James Earl Jones gives mm-hmm. the manager. Uh, there were scenes. I thought that were kind of ham fistedly written. I thought that the direction was pretty poor because I have seen enough movies where it's been done very well. And orchid, the, the, even the, uh, the, the, you're giving me a karate movie. The, the, the contract, right? The agreement is that you're going to have some awesome kung fu of some type, right, in this thing. And uh, no, uh, I get that the guy kicked the the cigarette out of the one guy's it was beautiful. mouth. Beautiful. Granted, he can do stuff, but I didn't even think he was showcased. No, he wasn't. In a way that like made me go like, holy crap, this is the next, you know, so and so, next Bruce Lee, right? Mm-hmm. That we're gonna put in all these movies and make him a, a star. He doesn't. It doesn't have that. I suppose that is like direction coverage and the editing. It's like all those things are not really here and it feels very low budget. I'm surprised that it has the people in it that it does. They all feel like they're kind of, I'm not saying they're slumming. Eric Roberts is doing you know, the best. He's like, I'm an Academy award winner. winner. Damn it. I'm going to cry. Nominee. Thank you, Holly. <laughs> uh, James Earl Jones, you know, but overall I was just like, uh, I wasn't won over by it. Even though as we are sitting here talking about the plot, I'm like, okay, I see how all these pieces fit together. And I appreciate that. But by the end of it, I have seen much better movies than this. And so for that reason, I am going to say, you don't have to see this one. Go see those. And I guess at the, the one that comes to mind, I'm like the Jean-Claude Van Damme ones. Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, the Karate Kid is the, the better, the best of you know. Because basically, <laughs> it's from the director of Rocky. It yeah, is Rocky right. for Karate. Yeah, right. So we're several steps below that. All right. So there you go. There you go. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna pass, Michaela. What do you think of best of the best? It's it, this movie's so stupid. Like I could, we were laughing at a lot of scenes. I feel like we were not supposed to be, and it it had that made for TV vibe almost. Yeah, it felt like. Uh, made for TV like karate version like you said of Rudy or like Brian's song even it felt like to me a little bit and uh, it's so cheesy and so dumb but I think that's why you should watch it like the replacements yeah yeah the movie with Keanu Reeves yes exactly yeah yeah. it's it's not nailing the tone it thinks it is and I find that kind of charming (laughs) it's like it's it's not well done and it's not a good karate movie if you want to see a good karate movie don't seek this out but if you want to see Mm -hmm. a stupid movie that's kind of entertaining then you should watch this so I'm going to recommend it for that (laughs) but yeah I I agree Colin karate is not my genre but that's why I like Holly bringing it because I get to learn about it here but it's just like they take themselves so seriously all the time and that's what makes it so funny to me is that even when the movie is being ridiculous they're still so serious about it i love love the dedication so i'm gonna recommend it 
Holly, what'd you think? Yeah. So I am. Um, this was a new one for all of us tonight. Oh, none of us had seen this. Oh, yeah, yeah, none okay. of us had seen this. Um, I was just going off of. We have a few listeners that have written in about this many, many mm-hmm. times, and I was like, you know what? We're just gonna go for it. We're gonna give it a shot. Um, so I I agree with you, Colin. There are some expectations about karate movies that we have or I have going into this that this did not live up to by any means. It's not a good karate movie. Well, because it's not a karate movie. It's a Taekwondo movie. Oh, oh <laughs> okay. So now all of a sudden it's at the top of the Taekwondo. Right. Yeah. Like, is it a good karate movie? No, but it's a great Taekwondo <laughs> movie. <laughs> um, no, like Michaela was saying, this movie is really stupid. Like at the end of it, when Korea wins and like pit, like gives them their medals out of pity, I was literally screaming at the screen. This is so stupid. <laughs> it's so dumb. It was so dumb. It's true. I was there. Yeah, you heard me. You heard me. Um, but we did have a lot of fun with it. I I I don't know that. Hmm, it, this is hard for me because I, we had fun with it. I don't know that everyone would have that experience. Mm-hmm. Like if I watched this by myself, I don't think I would have even had that experience. I think it's just watching it with you guys. We had fun. And as far as like a karate movie, it's it's not as good. So I have a really hard time not recommending it because we had fun with it. But I don't anticipate everyone would have that experience. So I can't in good conscience recommend it um it did spawn three sequels we can talk about those uh best of the best two in 1993 best of the best three no turning back in 95 and best of the best four without warning in 98 hmm. um, philip Ree is in all four movies uh he produced all of them he directed the third and fourth film all right uh, eric roberts comes back for the second movie um and the the premise i mean the premise varies, but the I think the missing component is that two, three, and four are all rated R. Oh. So, this was PG thirteen. This was PG thirteen. Okay, all right. So yeah, we definitely gotta watch the second one then. Yeah, from what I've read of the second one, I think at some point we should bring that. So yeah. I'm not gonna talk about the premise or anything. Because it's um, goofy. Because I think at some <laughs> okay. point we should watch okay. it. Okay. All yeah. right. So um yeah, I, I think the people saying that like the second one may have may be a better watch. I think you're probably right. I can't confirm because I haven't seen it, but I don't think I'm going to recommend this one. <laughs> All right. So it's a split, uh, kind yeah. of split, uh, split room then on mm-hmm. best of the but best. It's, but it's, it's hard for me to say that because we did have fun. Yeah. yeah. That's how I feel. I'm like, yeah. I had fun watching it. Yeah. yeah. We had fun. But not because it was a good karate movie. No, not at all. In it's spite terrible. of it. Yeah. It's absolutely terrible. <laughs> and as you were talking about Philip Ree there, I suddenly remembered another factoid about the man. That his brother is in this? No. Oh, yeah. Um, it, it turns out what he did later in life, right, after the best of the best movies dried up, mm-hmm. uh, he entered into a partnership with a Warner Bro- former Warner Brothers executive, and they formed a company called, I believe, Stereo Pictures. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. And they were responsible for 3D conversions of... All those movies that oh, were wow. 3D converted, including Titanic 3D and like wow. a whole host of wow. them. Yeah. They'd wow. shoot them in 2D and yeah, so that's how he's making all his money. Amazing. Nice. <laughs> I think it's um I think it's Eye Patch is his actual brother. Oh really? I think yeah. So. It's Simon Ree. Uh, oh played, shit. Played Dayhan Park, which I think was the Eye Patch. Yeah. 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 Yep. Okay, yep. Yep. All right, we'll see you later. That's there why you go. stick around to the end of the episode. Uh, now we're going to tell you what we're going to watch next week. And that's Michaela, me. what are we watching next week? I am leveraging my power to make two of my co-hosts watch something they should have watched by now. God damn it. We're going to watch Godzilla Minus One. Oh! Because I want you guys to experience it on the big basement screen. Oh! So. That's so nice of you. Yeah. Godzilla minus um, one. In color or in black and white? In color. Okay. <laughs> I mean, unless you, we'll, you know, we'll see how we feel in the day. How about All right. that? I think color, but. The Academy yeah. Award Motivated. winning. Yes. Oscar winning yeah, Godzilla, Godzilla minus one. All mm-hmm. right. We're going to talk about that next week. We hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark. <laughs>